Solar activity may be quieting down Earth's side, but Mars is getting hammered. The stories and more in the news this week. If you want to learn how weather from our star causes impacts at the Earth that shape the future of our world, join professors Dr. Jenny Meehan, Michael Cook, and myself as we guide you through a space weather certificate program like no other. To enroll in the space weather and environment science program offered at Millersville University, go to millersville.com edu slash swen. It's weather for the 21st century. This forecast also sponsored in part by CW Ops. Space weather this week calms down a bit on the Earth side, but as we take a look at our Earth-facing disk, you can see there's a lot of active regions in Earth view, but region 3697 has finally rotated to the Sun's far side, and once again, just as it gets behind the west limb, it starts getting a lot of activity going on. In fact, as you watch this, you'll see a big shock to the system right here on about the 12th. Bam! Right there. Did you see that? That was a big X-class flare along with a big solar storm storm launch. And just like last rotation, these are Mars directed. So Mars is once again getting hammered. In fact, as we take a look at the coronagraphs, look at this massive uh, halo that you see here. That's a solar storm that is going toward Mars. And we'll talk more about Mars in a minute when it comes to these big solar storms. Meanwhile, as we continue looking at the Earth facing disk, we have a couple filaments here that have erupted here late on the 12th into the 13th. Those went whoosh pretty much southward of Earth, but then region 3711 lights up with a big M flare. You can see it right here. Bam! That really didn't look all that eruptive. We thought, well, maybe a solar storm, but eh, it really didn't have much of a signature. Then shortly after that, you can actually see a bit of dimming coming from these this region here and a little bit of going on up in this area as well. And that, as we take a look in coronagraphs, well, we get this interesting soft kind of halo as you can see here it's this asymmetric complex halo with even a little signature inside and as we watch this thing evolve we kind of scratch our heads and go is this earth directed or is this a halo going to the sun's far side like a lot of these solar storms have been lately well luckily both the Space Weather Prediction Center and the University of Reading have modeled this structure as if it's coming toward Earth, and we'll talk more about that in a minute. Meanwhile, as we continue looking at things, while well, we do know we're going to get a bit of fast solar wind from this small pocket right here, that's going to be rotating in through the Earth strike zone over the next couple days. We also get a few poofs of stuff here, and we get a little filament launch between region 3707 and 09. You'll see it right here in just a moment. Whoosh, there it goes. So we're getting a lots of little mini solar storms that are headed toward Earth. Then finally on the 15th, you can see this big southward filament right here. This thing goes whoosh, just like that. Look at it in Subi. It's absolutely gorgeous. But this filament is also going southward of Earth, so we're not going to get any big solar storms from that. So it pretty much looks that pretty, this week is going to be a lot of like little mini solar storms, a bit of a disturbance here and there, but no big Earth-directed solar storms. So roar photographers, if you're at high latitudes, you can get some sporadic shows over the next few days, but Aurora photographers at mid-latitudes, well, it looks like we're going to have to wait a little bit longer for something more interesting. So now taking a look at our far-sided sun, well, this is not Stereo A because Stereo A is staring at the same side of the sun as we are. So we have to turn to HMI and AIA imagery of about two weeks ago to see what regions might be lurking on the sun's far side. And as we take a look, here's a whole region 3697 on the, the far side of the sun creating havoc, like we said basically shooting a lot of storms at Mars right now. But look right in this region in here. You're seeing region 3700 and 3699. They have been developing quite quickly. And as we take a look over here, we also see region 3701 and 3703 
also developing quite quickly. So as we pull up our JSOC HMI Helioseismology Farsighted Viewer, you can take a look at this. Uh, the, the gold regions are the regions on the sun's far side. The gray regions are the regions on the sun's front side. And as we put this thing in motion, you can end up seeing region 3700 as it's surviving its far side passage right here. It looks like that region might be continuing to grow along with old region 3691 and 93 and even old region 3695. So in fact, as we take a look back at the Earth-facing disk, you can see region 3691 and 95, they're the ones that are about to rotate into Earth view, and it does look like they have been firing big solar flares as well as solar storms, so it does look like we could get more activity from them. So Aurora photographers at mid-latitudes, here could be your shot to get some more activity. Now returning to that possible Earth-directed solar storm, we switch to our solar storm prediction model, Enlil. Now this is NOAA's version of the model. The top panel's density, the bottom panel's velocity. You're looking down at the sun from the North Pole with the Earth being off to the right. And as we set this solar storm model in motion, you can see that Earth-directed solar storm being launched here. It's kind of a two-parter. You can see the bulk of the storm is going to the east of Earth, but then there's a small sliver of it that's also going straight on toward Earth. And it's going to hit us in two parts. The first one is hitting us early on the 16th, but then after that, you can actually see that second part of it going to be hitting us on the 17th. Now, neither of these storms are expected to be all that strong. So aurora photographers, only if you're at high latitudes could you get some sporadic aurora over the next couple of days. Plus the fact that it's also with this high speed stream that you see here. This is the density plug from that. You could also enhance these storms just a little bit. That's if these storms are Earth directed. Remember, we're not completely sure. But as we switch to our University of Reading model, these guys also did a solar storm prediction run for this halo in case it is Earth directed and not far sighted. And as we look down at the sun from the North Pole with Earth being off to the right, just like the other models. In this case, you can see they've actually got this solar storm. Once again, it's kind of a two-parter. This is the part that's going to the east of Earth. That's the bulk of this structure. But then we had that other weaker stuff that looks like it's more of a direct hit at Earth. And as this moves out, it looks like Earth impact would be early on the 16th. So it's not going to be a two-parter from according to the University of Reading. It's just going to be one, but it's still pretty consistent with the NOAA uh, model run. So aurora photographers, if you are at high latitudes, expect to get a bit of a show sporadically over the 16th and 17th. But aurora photographers at mid-latitudes, well, we're likely going to need to sit this one out. Switching to your moon, we are now passing through the second quarter phase on our way to a full moon. And by the 20th, the moon will be about 97% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, well, you're going to have this bright companion and you're going to need to check your local rise and set times. And now switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating potentially the hit from that Earth-directed solar storm. So at high latitudes, NOAA is expecting minor storm conditions with up to about a 60% chance of a major storm and then uh, moving into active conditions. And that's also because that solar storm impact could be lingering or we could be getting a second hit from it as well as some fast solar wind. So that could bump us up to active conditions. In fact, we have about a 30% chance of minor storm conditions within things settling down as we begin to move through the middle of the week. But at mid latitudes, well, we're also looking at active conditions uh, at on the 16th because of that solar storm. But then as we move into the 17th, things should settle down quite quickly. We may not even get much of an effect from the fast solar wind. So roar photographers at mid latitudes, well, it likely things are going to stay unsettled, but you do have maybe about a 20% chance of minor storm conditions on the 16th. Still, it is kind of a catch as catch can, and it may not even be an earth directed solar storm. So remember, only if you're dedicated should you chase.
And now switching to our solar flare and dayside radio blackout outlook over the coming week, we are sitting well into the triple digits for solar flux, and this could potentially mean good radio propagation on Earth's dayside if it weren't for all those pesky big radio blackouts we keep getting. We're sitting at the moderate noise range uh, on the radio bands, and NOAA's giving us about a 55% chance of R1 to R2 level radio blackouts, and this is mainly due to region 3712, but we do have some new regions that are going to be rotating into Earth view, and they could be big flare players too. In fact, NOAA's giving us right now about a 10% chance of uh, radio blackouts at the R3 level, and this is due to X-class flares. And I'm going to stretch this out pretty much throughout the entire week because we do have those new regions that are going to be rotating into Earth view, and we do know they are flare active. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, just get, grin and bear it because things are going to stay tough for a little while. And now switching to our radiation storm and polar aviation outlook over the coming week, we are all sitting back in the green finally after being in a radiation storm for almost a week since basically June 8th when we hit the S3 level. But we are still elevated probably for about the next 24 hours. Thankfully, we are back in the D1 normal range. This is for you aviators at flight level 360. It's the S0 range for everybody else, and likely things are going to stay at the quiet level for quite some time, at least through the rest of this week, let's hope. And that's because region 3697 is on the sun's far side, so we won't be dealing with it for a little while. But NOAA's still giving us about a 10% chance of an S1 to S2 level radiation storm, and this is mainly due to region 3712, and likely that risk will rise just a little bit. So you frequent flyers, and this does include air crew who fly at high altitudes and high latitudes, pay attention to this, but you know what? You finally, I think, can breathe a sigh of relief. So the space weather this week is calming down compared to last week. Now we do have a few Earth-directed mini solar storms, and we could get that one weak solar storm headed toward Earth along with some fast solar wind. So likely we're gonna be in for a bumpy ride. Aurora photographers, if you're at high latitude, you could definitely get some sporadic shows over the next couple days, but aurora photographers at mid latitudes, well, these disturbances may not be enough to really give us aurora down where you are. So you might just want to sit this one out and wait for the next one. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, thankfully, region 3697 is on the sun's far side now, so things aren't quite as bad as they were last week. But we are still getting uh, big solar flares and radio blackouts intermittently from region 3712. And this will likely continue because we have some new regions that are going to be rotating into Earth view that are big flare players. So, uh, you know, hang in there. It's not quite so bad as it has been, but things are going to continue to be a bit on the tough side easily over this week and likely next week as well. And now you GPS users, well, things aren't too bad for you right at the moment. We don't have huge radio blackouts at the R3 level, and we don't have huge solar storms hitting Earth's night side, so likely things will be a little bit problematic for you, especially near dawn and near dusk. And of course, anywhere near Aurora, your reception may be a bit dicey. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.